subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shreya Savijay. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 27th of October. India expresses concern over China's new land border law, says it can impact existing bilateral pacts. Pakistan appoints Nadi Manjum as new intelligence chief after weeks of delay. An Islamic state in Afghanistan could be able to attack US in 6 months says Pentagon official. And now for all the details. India's foreign ministry on Wednesday expressed concern over China's new land boundary law that was adopted last week for the protection and exploitation of the country's land border areas. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bagchi said India expects that China will avoid undertaking action under the pretext of the law that could unilaterally alter the situation in the India China border areas. He said such a unilateral move will have no bearing on the arrangements that both sides have already reached earlier be it on the boundary question or for maintaining peace and tranquility along the line of actual control. India expects that China will avoid undertaking action under the pretext of this law he added. The new Chinese law will take effect on January 1, 2022. China shares its 22,457 km land boundary with 14 countries including India. The nuclear armed neighbors have not been able to agree on their 3488 km long border despite several rounds of talks over the years. The two countries fought a brief but bloody border war in 1962 and the distrust has occasionally led to flare-ups ever since. Thousands of Indian and Chinese troops have been logged in a high altitude face off in India's Ladakh region since last year despite the two militaries holding more than a dozen rounds of talks to defuse the situation. Authorities have flung into action with house to house survey disinfecting campaign and screening of local population after an air force personnel was found to be infected with Zika virus in Kanpur district. of India's northern Uttar Pradesh state that is already battling the dengue menace. Authorities in Kanpur district of India's northern Uttar Pradesh state flung into action on Tuesday with house to house survey disinfecting campaign and screening of local population after an air force personnel was found to be infected with Zika virus in the area. The surrounding area was declared a containment zone and authorities sprayed disinfectant at public places as well as the inside houses. At least 22 people who came in contact with the infected person were tested and turned out to be negative for Zika virus infection in a relief for the locals. Pais sample bheje gaye the jo unka result aa gaya jo negative aaye sare no sample aur bheje gaye unka shaam tak result aa jayega. अभी इस तरह का कोई और केस सामने नहीं आया है और लगातार उस सर्वे में और ये पंद्रह दिन तक हमारी ये एक्टिविटी शुरू रहेगी सोर्स रिडक्शन की भी और हाउस टाउस सर्वे के भी और स्क्रीनिंग के भी Zika is a flevi virus that spreads with mosquito bites. Most Zika virus cases are asymptomatic. However, it is especially dangerous among pregnant women. There is no known cure or vaccine for the Zika virus and the treatment largely focuses on dealing with symptoms that include fever, rash or arthralgia. Uttar Pradesh that is in the grip of dengue fever, a mosquito-borne viral disease on Tuesday reported 26 new cases in its Ghaziabad district, taking the tally to 547 in October alone. Dengue cases in Indian capital New Delhi also crossed the 1000 mark this year with 283 fresh cases reported in the last week. 
Dengue fever is common in South Asia, especially during the monsoon season, and there is no specific treatment. But with early detection and access to proper medical care, fewer than 1% of sufferers die from the disease. A news from Pakistan. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has finally approved Lieutenant General Nadeem Anjum as the new head of spy agency ISI. The announcement came after weeks of delay which had earlier raised speculations that there is a rift between the civil and military leadership. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan approved Lieutenant General Nadeem Anjum as the new head of spy agency ISI, the Inter-Services Intelligence, on Tuesday after a final consultation with Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa. The announcement, which is done officially by the Prime Minister's office, came after weeks of delay after Anjum's appointment by the Army, raising speculations that there is a rift between the civil and the military leadership. The head of the ISI is one of the most important posts in Pakistan at the intersection of domestic politics and Pakistan's foreign relations. The appointment comes as regional players try to stabilize the security and economy of neighboring Afghanistan after the Taliban takeover. Pakistani authorities, including the ISI, have long been accused of having links with senior Taliban members and offering them safe haven, charges vehemently denied by Islamabad. In recent months, the outgoing ISI chief Fez Hamid has made two known trips to Kabul to meet Taliban officials, one of them this month with the country's foreign minister. Moving on, scores of locals recently held a protest over prolonged power outages across Gilgit Baltistan almost every day despite paying up hefty bills. They blamed negligence by the Pakistani authorities to provide them even basic amenities and accused Islamabad of meting out a stepmotherly treatment to the illegally occupied region. Frequent power outages have continued to disrupt lives of people in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baldistan. A protest was recently held by locals and traitors in the region over prolonged load shedding in several areas despite paying hefty bills. The protesters claimed that the government had agreed to provide electricity during specific timings from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., but they receive it only for two to three hours and they're having a distressing time amid the onset of winters. और यहां अगस्त के महीने से नोटिसेस दिए गए हैं ऐलानात करके गए हैं कोई आलात इस्तेमाल नहीं करेंगे हीटर इस्तेमाल नहीं करेंगे गीजर इस्तेमाल नहीं करेंगे ठीक है कोई इस्तेमाल नहीं करेगा बिजली होगी तभी इस्तेमाल नहीं करेंगे आपने बिजली ही नहीं दी है हम हक मांगने के लिए आ गए और हम अपना हक ले लेंगे हमारे साथ बहुत बड़ा जुल्म है हमारे साथ जुल्म इस तरीके से है कि इस वक्त वापस में बिजली है यासीन में चार बिजलीघर होने के बावजूद हम अंधेरे में हैं Locals in Gilgit Baldistan have time and again accused Pakistan of meeting out a stepmotherly treatment to the illegally occupied region, failing to develop the infrastructure and leaving them high and dry. A top Pentagon official has sounded alarm that the Islamic State in Afghanistan have intent to conduct external operations in six months, including against the United States. In a testimony before the Congress, Colin Carl said it was, however, still unclear whether the Taliban has the ability to fight the militant group effectively. The U.S. intelligence community has assessed that Islamic State in Afghanistan could have the capability to attack the United States in as little as six months and has the intention to do so, a senior Pentagon official told Congress on Tuesday. Colin Call, the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy during a testimony before the Senate Armed Services Committee, said it was still unclear whether the Taliban, which took over Kabul in August, has the ability to fight Islamic State effectively. He stated that Al Qaeda also posed a more complex problem given its ties to the Taliban. This comes as Washington Post withdrawal has no agreement yet with countries neighboring Afghanistan to host troops for counterterrorism efforts. ISIS-K and Al-Qaeda have the intent to conduct external operations, including against the United States, uh, but neither currently has the capability to do so. We could see ISIS-K generate that capability in somewhere between 6 or 12 months. Uh, I think the current assessments by the intelligence community is that Al-Qaeda uh, 
would take a year or two to reconstitute that capability. And as you said in your opening, Senator, we have to remain vigilant against that possibility. This month, the Islamic State claimed two suicide bombings at mosques in Afghanistan, both targeting the minority Shiite sect, which killed more than 100 people. Acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Mutaki of the new Taliban government has said the threat from Islamic State militants will be addressed and Afghanistan would not become a base for attacks on other countries. It's been more than two months since the Taliban took over Afghanistan. Older girls are still not back at school. There are no women in senior positions in the new government. And the Taliban have said women will only be allowed to work in a small number of jobs. On Tuesday, a number of Afghan women took to the streets in Kabul, demanding their rights to education and work under the Taliban regime. A group of women marched through the streets of Afghan capital Kabul on Tuesday, demanding their rights to education and work under the Taliban regime, while urging their voices be heard by international community. The group held placards and chanted as armed members of the Taliban escorted them. <laughs> They criticized the silence of the international community, including the United Nations and human rights institutions, over the issue. More than two months after the Taliban took over the country, older girls are still not back at school. There are no women in senior positions in the new government. And the Taliban have said women will only be allowed to work in a small number of jobs. Meanwhile, Bibi Chaman Hafizi and her family have arrived in Greece after being on the run for seven weeks. Alongside 25 other female judges, lawyers and their families, she was evacuated from Afghanistan after the country fell to the Taliban. But now they are stuck in limbo, with no work and few belongings, facing months of bureaucracy before they can settle elsewhere in Europe. The Taliban have announced a general amnesty for state workers and pledged to uphold women's rights within Islamic law. But with waning opportunities and Afghanistan plunged into a deep economic and political crisis, few of them can imagine returning. A cricket bat manufacturer in India's Jammu and Kashmir is rejoicing as the Kashmir Willow Bats from his sports company are being used by the Oman team in the ongoing T20 World Cup cricket tournament. He hopes this will boost the industry in the Kashmir Valley, which is home to the hundreds of Willow Bat manufacturing units. A cricket bat manufacturer in Anantnag district of India's Jammu and Kashmir is elated as the locally made Kashmir willow bats by his sports company are being used by the Oman team in the ongoing T20 World Cup cricket tournament. Fazul Kabir Dar, owner of great sports company said he sees this as a growth opportunity for the sports equipment industry in the Kashmir Valley, which is already a hub of hundreds of willow bat manufacturing units from where they are sold in different parts of India and abroad. Our great sports equipment and bats are the Oman cricket team in the World Cup. So, they will be able to get more countries and play international teams. And we have tried to do this because Australia and Australia, New Zealand and South Africa, who are cricket playing nations, they will opt our bats slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly so that our economy can grow a little bit. Kashmir Willow is second only to the famous English Willow and is used everywhere from casual street games to just below test level in India. The industry provides direct and indirect employment to thousands of people in the Kashmir Valley. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.